Can you hear me? Oh, my. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. good. Thanks. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Laura. Okay. I work with uh, Luca, uh, the founder of mm -hmm. Online. And okay, cool. cool. So, uh, the biggest new uh, is uh, the release of your first EP, Recycled mm -hmm. Songs by Six Figure Retirement. And mm -hmm. behind the stage name. Um, I mean, there's nothing too, I guess, monumental or like mysterious. Um, it was literally, um, I was walking around with my friends and we were kind of joking, like, you know, if I ever retire one day, I want to have six figures in the bank. <laughs> so that's where it came from. Okay. <laughs> and um, coming back to the title, uh, the focus on love is uh, really significant. Mm -hmm. Um, also the the word recycled and um, the the song are, the songs are written in the past or during the lockdown yeah um, everything was written during lockdown um, okay. it was recorded either in this apartment or the one across the street um, yeah and I mean it was really just me kind of expressing what was going on throughout lockdown and um, I guess the term recycled uh, comes from, you know, in some ways I wrote about it thinking about one situation or one person, but okay. as time went on and as new experiences came up, it kind of, when I listened to it back or like when I played it, it kind of became about something else or someone oh. else. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, you say that uh, you, um, recorded uh, them uh, in uh, the house so during the lockdown yeah. you have written recorded and produced the uh, old songs uh, and what mm -hmm. experience uh, was also in terms of uh, uh, artistic growth for you um i think that you know um this is the first music that i've ever put out like ever okay. and um as far as artistic growth comes I mean I think just like you know actually writing down songs and like putting them out has been a really cool experience because um it's given me a better outlet to like use self-expression you know and that's kind of okay. what I see at songwriting is just like you know expressing myself through something that I love so I think that's been the most you know thing that that is that I've grown you know just to express emotions or feelings or whatever about certain scenarios into a song or whatever so yeah okay. so, and on Bandcamp um, today is also Bandcamp Day yep um, where you listen and also um, by the virtual support of the EP uh, mm -hmm. describe the recycled love songs as uh, sad songs uh, uh, from a sad dude and mm -hmm. When I listen to, to them, I also uh, listen to some uh, reference to Elliot Smith uh, or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And um, what, uh, what artists or uh, kind of um, inspiration you, um, you bring for uh, this, this, this work? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think Elliot Smith is probably the biggest one. Um, that's for sure. Um, and I mean, you know, there's a band called Sparkle Horse that I really like. Okay. And um, Sons of Haya, um, mm -hmm. that's a big one too. But I feel like the, the biggest influence for me to write the songs that I did was an album by the Magnetic Fields called 69 Love Songs. Okay. It was released yeah. in like 1998, I think. And um, I was listening to it a lot, like about a month ago. And that really inspired me to kind of, you know, just put down an EP that was all just love songs, By, you know. He's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can we expect the full length or um, a second work soon? Possibly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I want to. I don't know about a full length album, but maybe another EP. Yeah. Okay. Yes, there is also... Um, a formula that is uh, really contemporary the EP also for uh, listening also on um, the um, for the streaming yeah mm -hmm. yeah and 
the, um, the contemporary situation is uh, really um, in the middle of surreality uh, because of COVID-19. Uh, my question is, uh, what uh, does it mean for a um, young musician, uh, this, uh, this kind of situation? I think it means that the reason I put the EP on Bandcamp is okay. so that people could buy it and that, you know, I could get some source of income that wasn't through streaming. Because okay. I feel like streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music, Tidal, whatever, you know, um, they're not always super great about, you know, being, paying the artist substantially, you know? And so that's why I like Bandcamp and SoundCloud or whatever, you know, because there's not like a bunch of whole, like, you know, loopholes to go through and, you know, that it's kind of more direct. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, you know, as someone like me or any of my friends, you know, putting out music or whatever, I think Bandcamp is a really good thing because not only does it, you know, provide more direct income to the artist, but it's also, you know, it's like buying a record, you know, because you have like a physical copy of something on your computer, you know, yeah. that you pay for. And that's what I like about it. So, yeah. Okay. And, and that, that could be said about a lot of, you know, my young friends who make music too. Yeah. Okay, clear, clear. And suggesting a return on a stage uh, with the, who do you like to, to go on the stage? With, um, you can say every name and every kind of artist. Liam Gallagher. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> maybe in Europe. <laughs> yeah, maybe in Europe, totally. When, Os <laughs> when, o when Oasis reunites, <laughs> I'm actually wearing a shirt right now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Great. Totally. And some years ago, uh, going back in time, we saw you uh, in Italy uh, mm -hmm. on a San Siro stage in Milan. And for us, the, uh, this, that place is a sacred uh, uh, place for yeah. music. And uh, what are your memories or uh, also feelings about the night? Wow. Um... Yeah, I mean, 2000. Yeah. yeah, I remember like, I just remember just being amazed at how huge that place was. And just like, because <laughs> like every, every PJ show, I would sit right behind my dad's drum kit, you know? Yeah. And so I would get like the full view of the whole crowd or whatever. And that was amazing. But I remember at that one specific, specifically, I just saw like just this sea of people. I remember yeah. that. All right. I think about performing, I remember just like, you know, I remember I couldn't really hear myself. That's what, I remember that, but I just remember having like a really exhilarating feeling, you know, cause it's a huge stage. And I didn't know necessarily about, you know, the level of, you know, I didn't know how, how like powerful that place was in a lot of ways, you know? Okay. And you know, when I got asked to do this, I looked it up and I was like, wow, you know, but, um, but yeah, I just remembered that it was a really, really cool experience. And, Yeah. Okay. And um, just about the uh, curious and uh, I think also um, uh, per jam online uh, friends curious, what is uh, the, your favorite per jam album or song or? Hmm. I like Backspacer. I like that one. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. Also, for um, recent time, I would respect the other in the uh, 90s, uh, it's a um, recent album. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, can, I can play So we have a sure. preview. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Um.
you the first song of the EP. Right? It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was a pleasure for me and for yeah, the students of Perdomo Line. Uh, of course. This is a six figure retirement and Raymond Cameron. So thank you so much. And we hope to see you soon, maybe in Italy when the war <laughs> come back. To when the war comes back to normal. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank right. you. Bye.